In my last video I built a small dust collector for the pen router out of a small ash vacuum with a cyclone separator in between it. And now I want to join these two machines together by building a cart for them, which will then also allow me to finally move the pen router around. Because in my small workshop I really don't have any dedicated space for the pen router. So yeah, it really needs to get some wheels under it and that's pretty much it. That's the project building a cart for these two. I carefully lay out the frame pieces so that I would be able to get all of them out of this single board. This now is a good example of stress inside wood. At the end of the cut the board started to climb so hard onto the riving knife that I couldn't finish the cut. But no really big issue, I just have to split the board apart with a piece of scrap and then I can move on. I had worse examples like this happening off camera and every time I was glad about the riving knife and the motor brake of my saw. After that I further milled down the pieces. Before planing I like to remove the majority with the band saw. Also an opportunity for a fast cut load test. This is real time. Okay, got all the wood milled down, so time for some joinery. And as this is going to be a stand for the pant router, I think the only logical way to cut the joints is with the pant router. First, the box joints for the frame pieces. I made one test joint that fits pretty good, so I think I'm good to go. For the joints of the mating pieces I now need to offset the stock by exactly the width of one rod of it, cause otherwise they won't fit flush together. And I can do that with my T-Trek squares that I made in another video. Just bring them flush together. The pen router came with the center finding piece and this diameter is exactly the one of the bit. Just put that in between here, clamp it down again and I can cut again. Joints fit together so well that I can lift the whole frame just as it is. There will also be another piece here and I'll join this with mortise and tenon. the frame structure and there will be a wooden panel right here, here and here and therefore I need to cut some slots. I got the panel cut to size, all the slots finished and I also already chamfered the edges because it's much simpler to do that when it's not assembled. So now time for the first glue up. Okay, got two frames glued up, now I need to connect them with these pieces 
here, here, and at some more places, and definitely need to cut some more mortise and tenon joints. And I need to position the mortises at the right place so that this here will end up flush. And to do that I actually don't need to change anything about the setup on the pant rotor because it's still set up for the mortises and will cut a centered mortise onto this thickness and because all the pieces have the same thickness it will also cut a centered mortise into here. Half of them I could clamp here, the other half I need to clamp here and therefore need to move the stop to this side. And to get this at the right position on the other side I clamped a piece here. Now I can remove this and bring it to this side. And it should be at the correct position. Now while the glue is drying, let's have a look inside here, and I think the bucket is full. These are all the shavings that have been created by cutting all the joints for this frame, quite a lot. So, this thing really does its job great. Alright, the frame is done, and because of all the mortars and tenon joinery, it's super rigid, and also doesn't look that bad. Cut the top a little oversized so now I can mark the frame around it and locate the screw hole positions. And now time to add some wheels. This now makes it easier to use and especially a lot easier to move. And here's some place for storage rods, for accessories for it. And here's the place for the dust collection. And to mount this to the cart, I make these two special shaped pieces. One of them will be here. And the other one here. And like so, it's off the ground and can roll around with the cart. And I can still access the bucket. And get it out for emptying. Alright, got both machines now mounted and next I want the dust collector to turn on automatically when I turn on the pan router. And I'll do that with one of these master slave units that a kind viewer sent me through my Amazon wishlist and this in combination with a switch that will turn on and off the pan router and two plugs for the two machines and another switch for another feature. I made two cutouts into this piece for the two switches. Okay, got all the components mounted and now I need to wire them together. But it's a little difficult and boring to show step by step, so I'll leave a link to the video that I used for this. And this is how it looks after everything's been connected. This is the plug for the vacuum and this is the one for the router. And as you can see, I haven't connected any earth wire yet, because neither the router nor the vacuum required. But to avoid comments from all the safety people and the ones who like to quote some rules, that I get regardless of what I do or don't do, I'm gonna connect the earth wires anyways. Off camera. And to protect the components a little bit from the dust, I have this cover. And now this magic box gets installed here.
By the way, I also sanded and finished the card, but off camera because that's really boring work. Alright, and now for demonstration to show you what these two switches actually do. Both router and vacuum are now always turned on and I control everything from here. With this switch I can choose between the two modes. Right here it's master slave mode and here it's vacuum mode. And this is for switching on and off the router. Now I'm in master slave mode and once I switch on the router the vacuum will turn on automatically as well. And this is how to use it from now on pretty much all the time. And it's also cool that I can switch off the router with my knee. Not really a feature but really convenient. And if I only need the vacuum, for example for cleaning the pen router, then I can switch to the other modes which will only turn on the vacuum and also disconnect the power from the master slave unit so I can't accidentally turn on the pen router when I only want to use the vacuum. <laughs> Lastly connecting the hose and it's functionally done. And with this hose length I can still reach every possible position. No obstructions. I've already used it like so to build the stand for my new joint and planer combination and using it now is just great. I roll it in here, throw the pieces on here, cut the joints and then basically roll it back out. And if I have to do some cleaning, well it's all in turn now. Using it is just a pleasure now. It's also at a much more comfortable working height now than it was previously on the workbench. The last thing missing now are the drawers here for all the accessories which are now just standing everywhere. But that will be part of another video. You've maybe also noticed a few new camera angles in this video and that's because the company Banggood sponsored me this inexpensive little action camera. Looks like a GoPro but it's not a GoPro and it produces relatively decent footage as you can tell from the clips I included in this video. So yeah that's pretty cool and will definitely get used for future videos so yeah. And if you happen to be interested in something like this I've linked to it in the video description. This thing really does its job great. is done and because of all the mortise and tenon joinery it's super rigid and also not too bad looking uh, and also doesn't look that bad uh. maybe you've also noticed